Hey, I'm Sam. Welcome to Brickwall Pictures. Today's review is for The Slanted Gutter, the latest novel from S. Craig Zoller, who, if you follow this channel, you will know is one of my favorite writers and filmmakers, and someone who's been a major influence on my own writing. I became a fan of Zoller through his films before doubling back to his novels. It was right after reading my first Zoller novel, which happened to be Mean Business on North Ganson Street, that I first started working on what would become my debut novel, The Fall of Polite. Before that, I had been focused solely on writing screenplays, and seeing Zoller excel at both helped me realize that it was possible to write in both mediums simultaneously and the benefits that arrive from jumping back and forth between the two. So, of course, I was excited for the release of The Slanted Gutter, and that anticipation kept building as it was delayed for a couple of months. I grabbed my copy of The Slanted Gutter at the same time as I picked up Zoller's debut comic, The Forbidden Surgeries of the Hideous Dr. Davinus, which I already reviewed, so check the description for a link to that. I've also reviewed Mean Business on North Kansas Street, Wraiths of the Broken Land, Corpus Chrome Inc., and Brawl in Cell Block 99. I made a video essay about Dragged Across Concrete, and we played through Bone Tomahawk as a Dungeons & Dragons campaign, so I've covered a lot of his work on this channel. Links to everything will be in the description. There will be absolutely no spoilers for The Slanted Gutter in this review whatsoever, so don't worry about that. If you haven't read the book yet, you're safe here. The Slanted Gutter follows Darren Tasking, an ex-con who rejects the titles of pimp, gangster, and con man in favor of the more palatable label of entrepreneur. Although Task's entrepreneurial enterprises center mostly around illegal gambling and prostitution, he's highly intelligent and extremely cautious, and he's a master manipulator. Some of the best parts of the book are the ingenious ploys Task devises in order to get others to do what he wants. Though he has a number of heavies on his payroll, he sidesteps violence whenever possible, preferring to solve problems, as he puts it, obliquely. So much creativity goes into Task's social engineering to guide the hands of those around him with or without their knowledge. His methods are distinctive, and Task is a fascinating character to follow, if not always a likable one. I've found that many writers seem afraid to let their protagonists be anything other than wholly likable 100% of the time. One of my favorite aspects of Zawa's writing is that he does not have that fear. His characters are who they are. They behave truthfully to their core, and they never feel sanitized. Darren Tasking is not a good man, and in fact, he does almost exclusively terrible things throughout the narrative. But that doesn't mean he can't make for a grade-A protagonist. He has a core set of principles, and he sticks to them no matter the context. You understand who he is as a person, and even when he crosses a line, you understand exactly why he does. And I should make clear, he's not someone you hate. He's not contemptible or without merit. He has a handful of redemptive moments, and he shows just enough genuine thought and caring towards some of his associates that you can get on his side and root for him and feel bad for him. Plus, he's extremely clever, and any conversation with him is bursting with wit. There's no shortage of Zeller's fantastic, witty dialogue. Without spoiling anything, there was a point of no return for me with Task towards the end of the book. He does something that made him a person I could no longer comfortably root for, but I always understood why he did the things he did, even if I didn't agree with them. Everything he does is always true to the character. It's this one decisive moment that I think could generate a ton of discussion in the right environment. I would love to chat with others who've read the book about the third act, as I can imagine an extremely wide range of reactions and responses to the events in the latter third of The Slanted Gutter. All of the side characters are distinctive and memorable, and they fall at all different points on the morality spectrum. This story is dark and at times depraved, in a way that you might expect if you're familiar with Zoe's other work. His trademark violence and brutality continue to stun. Zoller describes his writing process as trying to surprise himself every day. He comes up with characters and goals and then lets them drive the story without any narrative rails or overarching thematic goal at the start of the piece. I find a modicum of joy in trying to spot these surprise himself moments, and I think you can definitely tell at least a couple of them if you're looking. It's a writing mantra that I live by now, surprise myself. So few stories genuinely surprise, and I'm not talking about a twist ending. I'm talking about the story as a whole being something that you cannot predict from the outset. With so many stories, you hear the logline or you read the little blurb, and you can pretty much guess exactly what will happen and in what order. And at that point, you've almost already experienced the story before even getting into it. Keeping overall stories surprising in this way is a priority in my writing, and it's one of the things I admire the most about Zoller's storytelling abilities. There's a point where you might think you've got the slanted gutter all figured out, but you don't. I could not flip through the last 120 pages or so fast enough. The whole book is a great read, but the third act 
if you want to call it that, is especially engrossing as things really heat up and everything established throughout the previous 280 pages or so all comes to a head. The climax of this book is incredible. It's violent, shocking, and it builds to an almost poetic crescendo of bloodshed. The third act also does something perfectly that I've only seen pulled off a couple of times in storytelling. Max Payne 3 is another example of it that springs to mind, oddly enough. It's the recontextualizing of the actions of the protagonist from another viewpoint long after the fact. We were on board with the protagonist in the moment, but when those same events are then cast in a new light later on in the story, it brings a whole different meaning and response to them. And it causes this almost profound questioning and reflective period in you as a reader. The way you might have felt about something at one point in the book might now be at odds with the way you feel about that same event or action by the end of the book. And I think that's a great thing. Definitely a rarity. The Slanted Gutter features Zoller's most contemporary grounded setting for a novel yet. And while it's true that Mean Business on North Ganson Street also made use of a contemporary setting, unlike the Western or sci-fi settings of some of his other books, it also took place in the fictional and extremely heightened city of Victory, Missouri, the worst city in America. A place where violence and death grace every street corner. The Slanted Gutter also uses a fictionalized city, as I believe all of Zoller's stories do, at least for the most part. In this case, it's Great Crown, Florida, but there's no heightening this time around. The location feels true to life. I went to college in Florida, so I spent a couple of years there, and I can say that Zoller really nails the rather particular Florida weather, as I would expect seeing as he was born there. The specific feel of the humidity and the constant bursts of rain, it, it might seem like a little detail, but it adds to the overall feel of the story's world. And it's plain to see how important world building is to Zoller, even his metal band is called Realm Builder. Maybe the weather just stuck out to me in particular because one of my screenplays is set in Florida and it was important to me to capture Florida's specific weather authentically. Since the vast majority of movies and TV shows set in Florida, which there are many of them, they never seem to get that right. It's always just sunny all the time. With the added sense of authenticity to the setting comes a naturally slower pace than some of Zoller's other stories. I've seen plenty of criticism of Zoller's films calling them slow, especially with Dragged Across Concrete, but they never feel that way to me. Those who do consider the pacing in Dragged Across Concrete too slow will likely feel the same about this story. Personally, I love the pacing of both. With Zoller, any slowness it's always purposeful and in service of the overall story and characters. The Slanted Gutter is his longest novel to date at 401 pages, and this added page count is both seen and felt in what I would consider a good way, but some others might possibly consider that a bad thing. Time plays a more important role in The Slanted Gutter than in Zoller's other stories. For large swaths of text, we follow the day-to-day, moment-to-moment happenings of Darren Tasking in his entrepreneurial endeavors. We're with him as he drives from place to place, we're with him as he waits in a room for hours on end, and we're with him as he uses the bathroom, probably a dozen or more times throughout the book, which is a realistic detail you don't often see. This added focus on time as a factor becomes more and more important as the story progresses, and it's used in some interesting and clever ways. One thing I absolutely loved, but that might turn some readers away, is that there is a certain point in the book where it feels like the plot is pretty much wrapped up, like the narrative is over, but then it keeps going on for another 200 pages or so. What seems like the main conflict of the book gets resolved, and then we're left in a period of something close to wandering and wondering where the plot could possibly go from here. It's unconventional, but I found it deeply compelling. I highly recommend The Slanted Gutter. It's a gripping read from start to finish, and it stands with the very best of Zoller's material. Pick yourself up a copy, and while you're here, make sure you subscribe, and you can grab yourself a copy of my novel too if you're curious about that. Thanks for watching. Bye.